So I know that COVID-19 has its obvious drawbacks, but one of the good things about having a deadly virus wreak havoc across the entire globe is I've barely left the house in about six months. And by effectively having no life whatsoever, I've saved an absolute bundle of cash, which I unfortunately then picked away on hard booze and Tesla stock. <laughs> But if you're just as skint as me and in desperate dire nude of a new smartphone, then no worries. One of the only good things about 20 bloody 20 is that loads of great budget-friendly smartphones have emerged, a lot of them under 200 quid. And yet despite that low price point, you'll still find some great features like massive batteries, impressive camera tech, and even the odd flagship style effort like a 120 hertz display. So here's my personal picks for the best sub 200 pound budget-friendly smartphones of autumn 2020. And I've personally reviewed all of them here on Techspert so if any of them tickle your fancy, go check out those reviews for all you need to know. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now one of the first smartphone manufacturers to really nail the budget market was Motorola, and it is still producing solid smartphones for well under £200. Case in point, the recently released Moto G9 Play, which delivers a satisfying all-round experience for just 150-ish of your British quids. As far as luck score, the Moto G9 Play sure ain't anything special. Like most budget phones, this is a plastic blower, offering little in the way of frills or flair. However, what you get here is a stock Android experience that's very easy to get along with, complete with all of those features that we love like a dark mode and gesture navigation, plus Motorola extras like a one-handed mode and the badass choppy torch effort. Performance is dependable thanks to the Snapdragon 662 platform, backed by 4 gigs of RAM. And you can even get stuck into some light gaming if you want to blow off some steam by blowing off someone else's skull. And battery life is also a winner courtesy of the mega-sized 5000mAh cell crammed inside there. Punish the Moto G9 player all you want, it'll easily last you all day. And if you don't go too mental, it'll get you through two full days between charges as well. And this budget smartphone is fine for media streaming too, with a respectable enough 720p HD display, although there's no stereo speaker action. Meanwhile, that triple lens rear camera is unsurprisingly limited, although the Moto G9 player can still take good looking photos in respectable lighting, helped along by some nifty AI smarts. If your budget is a little bit more limited than that, then you might be more tempted by Motorola's Moto G8 Power Lite, which will hopefully drop in price even more in the coming months as the Moto G9 series fully emerges. And I've done you full reviews of both of those blows and basically every Motorola handset that the buggers have churned out over the past 12 months, which is one of the main reasons why I get no sleep and my beard is turning grey. One of the best alternatives to Motorola is the Realme 6i, which starts from just 189 quid here in Blighty. My green tea model looks rather slow despite its plastic finish, but it's the rest of the phone that really, really impresses. You get a 720p HD display again that is bright and reasonably poppy, and an impressive set of features including NFC and Bluetooth 5 support. And yes, it is just a MediaTek chipset running the show here, but thankfully the Realme 6i isn't a stuttery lump. You'll see the odd little stammer, but overall it's fairly smooth for everyday shenanigans. That quad lens rear camera setup offers ultra wide angle smarts as well as a dedicated portrait snapper. And the Realme 6i proves absolutely fine for capturing everyday memories. That massive 5000 mAh battery also gets a thumbs up, equal in the Moto G8 Power Lite, and making this one of the best phones of 2020 for battery life, complete with a bit of 18 watt fast charging. Overall, this Realme blower is solid value for cash, and not much cash at uh, that as well, but bear in mind that the Realme 7 series has launched elsewhere in the world and should be coming to the UK around October 2020, and when that does arrive, that should mean a price drop for any existing handsets. Now moving on, and of course it's impossible to round up the best sub £200 budget smartphones of 2020 without some hot Xiaomi action, and especially now that they've just launched the Poco X3 NFC, which has to be one of the greatest affordable smartphones ever conceived. Sure, that near may be rather clunky to say the least, but the Poco X3 NFC serves up the kind of specs and features that you usually find in phones double the price. I mean, let's start with that gorgeous 6.7 inch full HD IPS screen, which boasts HDR10 support and tops off at a 120 hertz refresh rate, something you don't even find on most flagship phones in 2020. Movies sound good over the stereo speakers and you've got a headphone jack for plugging in and enjoying proper high-res audio. And this is one of the first smartphones to pack in Qualcomm's Snapdragon 732G platform, so you can absolutely blaze through games like Call of Duty and PUBG, no worries. Especially as Xiaomi found space for 6 gigs of RAM in this plastic wonder. And the Poco X3 NFC rounds off its general awesomeness with a freaking huge 5000mAh battery and a 64 megapixel main camera lens that can capture good looking shots in decent conditions. 
Xiaomi's even managed to sort out MIUI in time for the Poco X3 NFC. And of course, you've got the Poco launcher on there as well with its nice stock Android vibes. Overall, the software experience is really enjoyable too. So seriously, I'm struggling to find better words to describe this thing. It's the shit. It seriously just straight up is the shit. And if you can't quite stretch that £200 asking price, no worries. Xiaomi still has you covered with the cheaper Redmi 9. This 6.5 inch phone is a lovable beast, pumping out full HD visuals and lasting for yonks with its similarly huge battery. You don't get the 120Hz refresh rate or the HDR support or the stereo speaker setup, while the performance can be a wee bit stuttery as well. But the Redmi 9 can handle everyday life without much of a grumble and it will suit any users on a stricter budget. Now all eyes may be on Sony Mobile's latest amazing Billy Big flagship smartphone, the Xperia 1 Mark II, which comes rocking a price tag over a thousand pounds. But at the other end of the scale, for just 170 quid right now in the UK, you can bag yourself the Xperia L4, which boasts a few of the same advantages. You get the same super skinny 21 by 9 finish as that premium flagship phone, so the L4 is comfy to fondle, while many of the latest movies play with zero letterboxing on that 6.2 inch IPS display. Although yeah, there is a pesky notch intruding on the action here. Still, it is a crisp and colourful panel and that stretched aspect ratio is also very well suited to multitasking with two apps at once. Unfortunately, one obvious problem with the Xperia L4 is its ancient creaky software. What you get here is the old Android 9 OS on board with no sign of an Android 10 upgrade in sight. So yeah, that means no dark mode, no gesture navigation, yada yada yada. And like the Realme 6i, it's a MediaTek chipset stuffed inside, but once again, performance is on the whole dependable and like gaming is still definitely possible. And while the 3580 milliamp battery is definitely outshone by others in this best budget roundup, I found it was strong enough for all day play no worries. The Xperia L4's rear 13 megapixel primary lens can capture sharp, natural looking photos, although it is easily thrown by imperfect lighting, like many budget phones. And you also have a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle lens to play around with and a portrait mode for adding bokeh to your shots, but that is pretty much it for bonus features. While the Full HD video chops are alright for your simple home movies. And if your budget tops off at around that £150 mark, then definitely do not sleep on the Nokia 5.3 either. Just 150 of your British quids will buy you this surprisingly decent stock Android smartphone with very respectable specs and guaranteed OS updates for the next couple of years, provided the apocalypse doesn't actually happen first. You've once again got a Snapdragon 665 chipset stuffed inside which can handle gaming on the go as long as you keep those detail settings stuck on the low level. The 6.5 inch HD screen does lack the detail of those full HD handsets also mentioned in this best budget phones roundup, but it is still good enough for enjoying a spot of Netflix on your lunch break. And while the 4000 milliamp battery once again isn't as impressively huge as some rivals here, it does drain nice and slow, so you'll easily last a full on day without running dry. Remember kids, size isn't everything. So those are my personal picks of the best sub pound smartphones that I've personally tested and reviewed. But of course, there are a few that I haven't quite managed to get around to review them because there are just so bloody many budget smartphones, it's not physically possible for one person to handle them all. So for instance, one budget-friendly handset that I haven't had the chance to review yet is Samsung's Galaxy A20e. It costs 150 quid SIM free on the likes of Amazon, and it's a reasonably compact model as well, something that's becoming increasingly rare in 2020. The 5.8 inch display almost completely fills the front serving up punchy HD visuals, while the 13 megapixel rear camera is backed by a 5 megapixel wide angle lens, something that you don't see too often at that £150 price point. So that right there is my personal pick, my favourites, the best sub £200 budget friendly blowers that you can buy right now in autumn 2020. But there are a couple more lingering on the horizon, Xiaomi has already teased yet more smartphones coming soon, the Realme 7 series is due here in the UK in October, so there's plenty to look forward to. And oh yeah, don't forget Motorola Moto G9 series again no sleep for uncle spurt hazard but have i left off your own favorite budget smartphone of 2020 so far definitely let me know in the comments below it might be that it's just not ranging here in the uk or that i've simply unfortunately not had time to get to it but it'd be great to hear your own personal picks and please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech cheers everyone love you